Hi, so if you've been trying to create a dynamic website, you know one that does more than just display some static HTML? You know that it can be quite a chore. So today, I'm going to try and show you a way to do that much faster using XAMPP with PHP. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is to make sure you have administrator privileges on your computer. In order to do that, open up Windows Settings by typing in Settings into the search bar and then it'll open up. Now go into Accounts and you should be under the in the Your Info tab and you should have your user. And then under that it should say Administrator. If it says that, you're all good. If you're not the administrator, uh, this process is not going to work. So next thing you need to do is download XAMPP. This is going to install PHP for you, which is the program we're going to use to create your website. So go to Chrome or your preferred browser and just search up XAMPP. And it should be the first link from apachefriends.org. Try not to go to other versions because they might contain malware. So now click XAMPP for Windows. If you have other operating systems, you can try the other ones, although I'm using Windows. And this should start downloading right here. Should not have clicked that. And if it doesn't work, you might have some Chrome settings that are a little bit different. In that case, you have to click where it says click here. But I'm just using the default Chrome settings, so you should have those as well. Unless you change something. So this is done. Now we just click this. Okay, and now you're going to get a little pop-up box, unless you change some settings, that uh, basically is complaining that you're installing something outside of the Microsoft Store. Just click Install anyways. Now you have to make sure you allow control to the device, so just click Yes. My computer is running a little bit slow. Yours is likely going to be faster. There we go. We have a little warning here. Just click OK. And now you just go through the setup. So just click Next. Everything here is totally fine. You can keep that. Click Next. Uh, C drive is going to be very convenient, so keep that. Or if it's not that, try to keep it in the C drive. Click Next. Language, uh, whatever your preferred language. I, I do English. Uh, this is fine, but you don't really need to learn more about it, so you can uncheck that. It's just going to open up a new tab, and it's a little bit annoying. So now, you just go to the setup, and there it is. It's going to take a little bit of time on my computer, so I'm going to fast forward this bit, but uh, that's just because my computer is slow. In general, it's going to be pretty quick. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so now you can see we're reaching the end of this installer, and now it's actually going to want to restart the computer, so I'm going to stop the recording right now, and then restart after the computer uh, reboots. Uh, let it reboot, it's going to do it automatically. Okay, so the reboot just completed. Uh, one note about the reboot, just click restart anyways, and you should be good. Now you want to start File Explorer, so just, you can go here and type Explorer and then open it up. Now you want to go to wherever you just downloaded XAMPP. If you remember, we did that in the C drive. So go to this PC, and then the C drive. And here you can see XAMPP. And now in XAMPP, all of our PHP files that we want to serve are going to be stored in the htdocs folder. So let's double click on htdocs. And now you want to create a new project. In order to do that, all you have to do is create a new folder. So let's do that. Create a new folder. And let's call it Project 1. And in, it's inside this folder that we're going to store all our documents. Now you might be tempted to go here and directly create a new PHP file or create a text document and change it into a PHP file. That's not going to work. For some reason, Notepad keeps it as a TXT file. So what we're going to do is keep this there and then separately open up a notepad document just let's notepad and here control s to save or save as and oh it already put us here in project one now you, what you want to do uh, pay attention very carefully here you want to change the type to all files and then call it whatever you want dot php the normal um, naming of this is index.php 
That's the home page of your site. So save that. It's going to be automatically served. And now this is your PHP file. Now to double check, go here, check your project one folder, and make sure this says PHP file right here. If this does not say PHP file, like if it says text document, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to serve your file properly. So now let's test this and create a PHP document. In order to do that, PHP is just an HTML document with some PHP code inside of it. So let's just write some HTML, basically. Let's make a heading, h1, and let's say hello world. And just so you know you're, I'm not cheating and opening up a separate tab, let's call it hello world. This is a PHP file. And let's close that tag. Okay, there we have. We have our index.php file in project one. Now you want to serve this. So in order to do that, you want to open up your XAMPP control center. So go to your uh, uh, window search bar here and just type up XAMPP and it should show up XAMPP control panel that, that's what it's called click that and it's going to ask for your language so choose whatever you want between English or uh, German and it should open up right there okay so now you have four uh, five options right here so you're not going to need any of these for now we just need to start Apache just to serve our PHP file. So let's start Apache, wait for it to go green. You might have to click start a couple of times before it goes green. It might uh, abort the first time. I've also noticed the first time you run it, it's going to take a longer time to turn green. Okay, there we go. It turned green. But yeah, the first time it might take a longer time to turn green. So now what you want to do is open up your browser of choice. I'm going to use Google Chrome because the majority of people will use that. but any browser works. And then your site is going to be served uh, straight from the default localhost, as long as you didn't change any settings. So go to localhost, slash, and now you want to enter the name of the project you created uh, under the htdocs folder, and that is project1, so type in that. And now, there you go. You see that this is that PHP file being served. And if you ever want to change that, just to make sure it does update, double-click that, and you can say file, uh, now let's do update. Okay, now you've changed that file, now refresh, and you can see it updated there. Now, the good thing with PHP is you, cannot, you can do much more than just a static HTML file. You can create logic and dynamic sites. And let's have a very simple one there, and let's create some PHP. In order to do that, you want to have an opening uh, bracket with this uh, less than symbol, question mark, PHP. You also want a closing bracket, which is question mark, uh, closing angle bracket. And inside of that, you want to add some PHP code. So let's do if 1 equals 1 echo uh, inside the if statement. And then let's say, okay, let's have that for now. And now let's refresh. And there you go, inside the if statement. Now if you change this to if 2 equals 1, now it should not print that. There you go. It does not do that. PHP can be a very powerful tool. In conjunction with a database such as MySQL, PHP can be used to create a fully functional web app. Case in point, Facebook was originally created and run using PHP. And finally, once you're done with your tasks, you can go over back to this control panel and then stop this. And that's it! Although other technologies may come with built-in security features and built-in authentication and some other goodies, I find PHP to still be the quickest and easiest way to create a web app, especially whenever you have a short amount of time. Thanks for watching! Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. I hope you found this helpful.